Hey, it's John Broadloff, the creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project and an embedded systems developer at my company, Broadwell Consulting, Inc. If you need help with embedded systems or a medical device development project, uh, look me up. I can help you. Today, we're going to be doing a teaser of the upcoming 2.1 firmware for the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. One of the things that I'm really excited about is what I'm calling output scaling, which is a processing code module attached to every proportional output, servo, PWM, uh, things of that nature, that uh, incorporates scaling, filtering, and in this case, PID control, where on a Serial Wombat chip, you can have an input from one pin feed to a PID controller, which controls another pin. And we're going to demonstrate that today with two 12-volt PC fans. These are four-pin fans, which means that you have a pin for power, a pin for ground, a pin for a tachometer, and a pin for PWM, or actually speed control. It's not strictly speaking a pure PWM. So I've got one fan that's going to be powered, and I have another fan where I've cut the coil. It turns out that if you put a zero PWM in here, it still gives it some level of power. Uh, I think because it's best if the fans are always spinning so that they don't get stuck installed if they get covered with dirt or whatever. So anyway, to get this thing to totally stop, I had to cut the coil and you have to apply power to it for the tachometer to work. So essentially these two fans are, one fan is gonna drive the other. It will be kind of like a torque converter in an automatic transmission where there's a, 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 an intermediate air space. The air will flow and one will drive the other. So if I just turn on the fans now, one fan starts and you can see that it drives the other fan. That's not terribly interesting, uh, but it will be interesting when we try to control the speed of this fan based on that one. And then PID control is really good at dealing with disturbances. And so we'll do things like put a hand in front of the fan, move the fans back and forth, and watch how the PID controller performs in terms of keeping this fan at a constant speed. So we're going to use the Serial Wombat Panel application uh, to initially play with our control system a little bit, and then we will port it over to Arduino. So we're going to open it. That chip is currently plugged in on COM number nine. Be patient. Well, it initializes. Okay, so we've got an initialization. We can see we're ver running firmware version 2.1, which is what we need. So we know that on pin 10, we have the PWM. So I'm going to assign that pin to PWM. I'm going to, and we'll just hit configure for right now. Pin number 11, we know we have attack, so we're going to use the pulse timer and configure that guy. If we set that to auto sample, oh, I forgot to set the pull up. We have to set a pull up. Okay, so we're seeing that we are getting about 52 hertz, uh, which the uh, fan generates two pulses per revolution. So it's going around about 25 times per second. Uh, we multiply that by 60 to get RPMs. So uh, about 150 RPMs. This is reasonable. So let's, and then let's get the tack from the other fan, which is being driven. Uh, set the pull up, configure. Frequency, configure, and auto sample, which means that we'll ask constantly, okay, what did I do wrong here? Okay, I had one of my wires had come unplugged. So we can see basically now we have uh, pin number 11. I'm going to, is the tachometer off of the powered fan. And you can see it's running at about 53 pulses per second, 26 revolutions per second, uh, whatever that is in RPM. And so if I reduce the duty cycle on the fan, you can see that one falls off. Similarly, on pin number 12, we have the driven fan, which has dropped down to about 14 pulses per second. We can see that the 
driving fan is at 46 pulses per second. The driven fan is at about 14. So obviously the driven one is running much more slowly than the, the I'm sorry, the passive one is driven, is running much more slowly than the one that's being powered. So let's take a look now at PID control. We're going to go over to this P, uh, PWM pin and eventually we're going to in, enable scaling. So how does scaling, how does the scaling work on the Serial Wombat 18AB chip? Well, each pin outputs a piece of public data. In the case of the uh, unpowered fan, the passive fan, it's outputting its frequency in pulses per second. And right now that's uh, 19. So that will come in and will the PWM pin that's running the scaling state machine will read that input from another pin periodically. It's possible for it to scale these to different sizes. It's possible for it to invert it. Essentially, all numbers in the Serial Wombat chip are 0 to 65535. If we say invert, it subtracts it from 65535. That's important because like in the case of the PID controller, we expect a positive output to result in a positive change in the uh, source pin, the pin of the plant that we're measuring. And so if they're opposite of that, then you need to run the invert. Then we run it through a control algorithm uh, and that control algorithm could be hysteresis. It could be PID, like what we're running today. There may be other things in the future. Uh, and it'll have either that algorithm may have a target or constants. In this case, we'll have uh, PI and D constants, and we'll also have a target that we're going to try to drive. And so then it will come through here. Output filtering allows you to adjust the rate of change. You don't necessarily want to combine that with a PID controller because they tend to fight against each other. But for some things, like if I'm moving a robot arm with servos, I may have the, the control algorithm be a pass through. And that output filtering may limit how fast the servo can change. So that like if I say, okay, go from, you know, uh, 10 degrees to 80 degrees, it doesn't just sling it as fast as it can. It, it, dithers it over time to make it do that. Scaling output is useful to change the output at the last step before it goes to the physical controller. So like for instance, on a servo, if I have a robot arm that's only capable of moving 90 degrees, I can scale the output so that an input from zero to 65, 535 represents a 90 degree change or 100% of the range of the robot. So any of these boxes can be used individually or they can be uh, they can be combined in various ways. So for this one, right now we're going to skip the scale inputs. We're going to skip the invert because a faster uh, a higher PWM results in a faster fan, so we don't need an invert. The PID is what we're going to be focused on. Output filtering, we're going to keep turned off because it's not good with PID, and we don't have any need to scale the output. And so it will update the output. And then the big question is, how often do you run this state machine? And the answer to that depends on how responsive your system is. You know, in the case of the uh, pins that we're getting, we can see that we're getting on the on the passive fan, we're getting about 18 pulses per second. You definitely wouldn't want to run the the control algorithm too much faster than that. You don't want the same the algorithm responding multiple times to the same piece of data. So for this particular one, I might uh, you know set it to run 16 times per second, or maybe you know maybe. Uh, eight times per second if I thought we were going to have a slow fan. So we'll probably try running it at eight times per second and see how, how that works. So let's configure that PWM now. So we're going to go in here and actually let's look at one more thing. We have the ability to do uh, scaling on outputs as well. And so let's do a transform on this guy. We said before that there's two pulses per revolution and that we tend to like to think in RPMs. So let's multiply the output of that by 30. And all of this is happening on 
the serial wombat chip. Uh, we're sending commands down that says, I want you to alter your output. So I'm going to say, I'm going to configure the MX plus B. I'm going to enable it. And now we can see, oh, okay, instead of 18 hertz, the public data that's coming out is somewhere in the range of 550 uh, revolutions per minute, RPMs. That's the that's the range that I like to think of, you know, things spinning. The scientists, the scientists in me think, oh, standard units. Maybe I should use like radians per second or something like that. But you know, you grow up around engines and you think in terms of RPMs. Uh, so let's do that on our other tachometer as well. We'll go to transform, multiply the output by thirty. and enable that output and okay we can see that the uh the the driven fan is running much more quickly it's running about 1700 rpm so let's go over here to the pid controller and we'll start with each of these numbers are divided if you if you hold over it uh so that you can have fractions it it is in 256ths so I don't know, let's pick out a value of 1,000, of 4,000. And so that would be, what, in 256, about 16. And we'll leave KI off. The sample period, we said before, uh, maybe eight updates per second based on how frequently we get ticks on this uh, passive fan. And so eight outputs per second is about a period of about 100 and. 28 milliseconds you multiply 128 by 8 you get about a second so and then the data source pin what are we trying to control who's providing our input the answer to that is pin number 12 which is our uh, passive input so i'm going to configure the pid hit it again oh and i, I gave it a target value of zero that's no good so let's see if we can control the uh the output fan to a eh, let's do 400 okay and so that's that's not nearly enough uh when you control wind pin by another you can see the output and so let's go over here pin number 10 let's monitor its public data and we can see, okay, the PWM that it's putting out right now is 6,000 out of, uh, out of 65,000. So it's not driving that thing nearly hard enough. If you've done PID tuning before, you know, okay, let's start with a higher, harder proportional output. So we will go to the PWM and let's jack that kp way up okay so now it's driving it really really hard it's driving it at 65,000 and the input pulses that we're getting doesn't seem right oh the fan has totally stopped it's stalled so I'm going to go over and I'm going to hit it with my finger real quick just to get it rolling okay now it's running again there wasn't quite enough push off of the fan in order for it to uh, be able to drive that and so we can see okay we told it what do we what did we tell it to do on the PWM we told we told it we wanted 400 and we're getting a value of about 240 So we'll jack the KP all the way up. And actually, I need to make this range a little bit a little bit farther. Uh, so but let's let's go ahead and add a KI. I'm going to adjust the range on this so that we can get an even larger KP uh, over time. So let's add a 2000 KI. And we can we can see it; it's chasing it. So that's that's an underdamped system. 
So we'll reduce Ki. And we're not quite getting up there as fast as I'd like. So let's make that one. We'll push it up to 500. Every time you hit the configure PID, it uh, it resets the integrator. So it takes us a little bit of time to get back up there. Okay, and I'm going to make that. Oh, that's too much. I'll make that uh, maybe 800. Tuning PID controllers is kind of fun. Okay, so it got it it settled there pretty quick, and we're getting a little bit of oscillation. And one of the things you'll notice is we're not getting contiguous values here. There's a, a kind of a disconnect as to how precisely we can meet, read the pulses, and so they're coming in at uh, quantized values. We're not getting smooth transitions, partially because of the sample rate and partially because of the way that we measure the pulses. So we were shooting for 400 and we got to 400. That was pretty cool. And we could see in order to get to 400, it took us uh, about half, 35 out of 65,000 of our available power to the fan. So let's change the target value. Let's tell it now I want you to drive that fan at 500 uh, pulses per second. And we do a configure and it goes up. It says, I want you to go faster. And the PID settles in uh, pretty effectively. So one of the things we can see this, uh, this PWM output, that's how hard it's driving the fan. This is how fast the passive fan is going. Uh, let's disrupt the system a little bit and see how it works. Okay, here we have our tuned system with the two fans, and we can see that we are running at right around 500 RPMs. If I move the two fans together, the system becomes more efficient. And so you'll see the power to this fan goes down, but this fan keeps running at approximately the same 500 RPM. If I move it farther away, the system becomes less efficient. This ha fan has to work harder to keep that fan running at the same speed. And you can see actually this fan is maxed out. That's too far away. It can't quite meet that speed. So we'll move it up a little bit closer so that the controller can work. And I pulled one of my wires out here for a second. It's kind of all held together here with uh, with uh, alligator clips. So, and what we have here is there's a little bit of wind up on the uh, integrator. It was integrating stuff during that period of time that it was turned off. And so it kept saying, I'm driving as hard as I can, but the fan won't go up. So the integrator kept going up and we'll see that wind up get undone here in a minute. A uh, future update that I want to do is make the integrator visible so that you can see what's happening with that aspect of the uh, control system. I'm going to go ahead and reset the control system. Uh, Okay, and so we can see it went back. It went back to its 500 nominal. If I move this closer, it slows down. If I move it farther away, it speeds up. If I put my hand in between the two of it, uh, you can see that makes the system less efficient. It has to work harder, and it's not quite reaching. Yeah, it is. It's getting there. So it got up to the 500. If I take my hand away then the system gets more efficient. You see the fans speed up for a moment, and then the power on the left-hand PWM uh, drive goes down. So that is a PID controller. 
It works good, deals with disruptions and disturbances well. Uh, let's take a look at how we can turn this into an embedded system uh, totally without the computer that's controlled by an Arduino but runs the PID control on the Serial Wombat chip. Okay, let's take a look at the sketch. Uh, you can get a link to the sketch in the description down below. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a Serial Wombat chip. We're going to instantiate two Serial Wombat pulse timers with 18AB extensions, a passive tack, which is connected to the fan that isn't powered, and an active tack, which is attached to the fan that is. And we'll implement a Serial Wombat PWM with 18AB extensions called Fan PWM that will drive the PWM controller on the active fan. We'll define pins for each of those inputs and outputs. We'll start up our I squared C, set up our serial. We'll go through a uh, uh, an introduction. We'll double check to make sure that we can find a serial wombat chip on the on the bus, and we will check to make sure that we're running at least version 2.1. It won't run uh, properly on prior versions. Uh, that code is found over in this other tab, and then from there we will uh, start up our serial wombat chip. Uh, we will start up a fan PWM and for a moment turn it up to high speed. Uh, we will initiate a passive tachometer on the tack pin and we'll measure in microseconds and the true here turns on the pull-ups which is important because the tack is an open collector input. We're going to configure the public data output instead of the default high time to be a frequency uh, measurement that gets updated on the low to high transition. And then we're going to add a transformation on that output that multiplies it by 30. We take the 30 and multiply it by 256 because the input is actually a fraction. Uh, so this would be 30 and 0 256. And this linear transform, we have no offset, so it's 0. And then we turn on the processed input, which enables this transform that we just configured. We'll do the exact same thing for the active tack. And then the fan, we're going to set up the PID based on the parameters that we uh, came up with in the Serial Wombat panel application when we were attached to the computer. We'll set our KP to 65535, KI to uh, 895. We want a target speed of 400. And we want the PID controller to run every 128 milliseconds. So now that that PID is, con is configured, we can uh, enable the output scaling, which enables the PID controller. True turns it on. And we tell it what pin is the input to the control scheme. And it's the passive tack pin. Then once we go into a loop, we see that it is quite simple. Uh, we're just going to read the fan PWM output so we can see how hard we're driving the fan. And we will read the passive tachometer to see how fast the fan is spinning. Note that the Arduino is doing absolutely nothing to do real-time control. It's merely monitoring the outputs of the Serial Wombat chip. So if we take a look at that output, I've had it running for a little bit here. We can see that it's doing a pretty good job targeting uh, the... Uh, output, uh, you know, it's it's varying this power and we're shooting for 400. And I realized why we're seeing these exact number jumps. If you notice their differences by 30, the uh, pin, the pulse measurement pin mode outputs in hertz and it has a, a resolution of one hertz. We take that and multiply it by 30. That's why we're seeing this jump here. So it's actually impossible for us to hit 400 based on this control system uh, because it's not an, uh, uh, a multiple of 30 of an, e of an integral number of hertz. So it's oscillating back and forth between 390 and 400. So let's take a look real quick and see that the control system is functioning and dealing with disruptions. So we can see the two fans working here. I'll put my hand in between and we see it has to work harder to maintain that 400 uh, attempted speed. Take my hand away. 
we get a, a little boost and then it goes back to normal. So what one of the other things I want to see here is we've got the I squared C lines that are running back to our uh, Arduino chip. I'm going to pull those lines. And I just reset some. Let's hit the reset key here. Oh, I pulled out the uh, that stupid power pin again. Okay. So I'm going to pull the Arduino pins entirely off of there. So at this point, we are not connected to the Arduino at all. Absolutely nothing's going on. We can see that the values have, have gotten wacky. But what we see here, and you can see it a little bit on the power output here, is that we're still getting PID control uh, running serial, solely off of the Serial Wombat chip. One of the things that makes this interesting is there's also a capability in the 2.1 to download a set of commands and have the Serial Wombat chip execute those at startup without being told by the host. So using this set of commands, we could actually turn the Serial Wombat chip into a standalone PID controller that would go into PID mode immediately uh, upon startup without any commands from a host. So that'll be in a future video. That's all I have for today. I hope you found this interesting, and I hope you're excited about the forthcoming uh, 2.1 release of the Serial Wombat firmware, which should be out uh, hopefully by the end of the summer. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.